Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news. And a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Media and City Manager Mark Roloff. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on GovTV for your City Manager's Report, your source for all of the latest and greatest news going on right here in Oshkosh, as well as a preview of the upcoming City Council meeting agenda. I'm your host, Emily Mikowski, and as always, we are joined by our City Manager, Mark Roloff. So Mark, without further ado, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Great to be here, Emily. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the first half of the show, uh, take a little break, and then we will return with a review of the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, August 23rd, 2016. Mark, the first thing that we want to talk about, kick off the show with uh, the YMCA groundbreaking that took place a few weeks ago already, and it's really exciting news because this is a huge project here. The downtown Y's expansion, rehabilitation of their facility is so great. It's great for the Y and all of its members, and what they do for the community is, is just wonderful, and they're making a facility available right in the downtown area and expanding and, and providing uh, greater services than what they've done before is such a wonderful thing. I was uh, able to be part of the groundbreaking ceremony and we've been working with the Y on the logistics of getting things done so they can get their project done on time and we have some street projects going on in that area. Uh, we decided we're going to do Washington after they're done mm -hmm. because uh, Washington Avenue uh, is in great need of replacement. I've gotten plenty of uh, question <laughs> marks on that one. Yeah. It's like, when are you doing that one? And it's very appropriate. But the Y is making a strong commitment to the downtown. And we're going to talk about a few things today about what's going on with the downtown. The plans are amazing. And it's really just saying we need to have a quality facility for the Y members, but also a quality facility in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you already that there are people who are looking at uh, things that they can do in the downtown from a development standpoint because of the wise commitment to it and because of some of the other things that we're doing and it kind of works together so the why does some of these things we do other things and the development community does it reacts to those things in a positive way so happy to be part of that uh, that groundbreaking and ceremony. energy was contagious there that day. It, it was a it great really turnout. Was. They had a lot of kids uh, that mm -hmm. were there for the why daycare as well as just members of the Y. What would you say there? I mean, you were there too, Emily. A couple hundred people. Oh, easily. Yes, yes. And it was they were creative. They made it fun for the kids too that were there. Um, obviously, they had the playground right there so everyone was playing. But then this bridge that we're looking at, the Bridge to the Future, it was a kind of a, a fun, formal way to walk into the next step of this project, the, the beginning of it. So it They were really hanging cool. in and on the bridge yes. and, and doing it, yes. just having a great time. And uh, there are so many partners that the Y assembled, the Community Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, and so many other groups and uh, private businesses and private individuals who are who are pledging money to that. I don't I don't even know all of them, but uh, and sometimes they don't want to be known. They're mm -hmm. just quietly helping improve the community, and that is says so much about how our community is committed to making uh, the overall community better. And just very proud to be part of that uh, that groundbreaking and. Uh, looking forward to seeing what it brings in the future. Yes, looking at about December-ish 2017 for an opening. That's what it looks which like. Which will come qu quickly. Oh, God, <laughs> I hope so. I'm, yes. I'd be happy to see that uh, uh, up and open. Definitely. Up next, Mark, we wanted to mention the Oshkosh Police Department is looking for applicants for their police academy, uh, which is a really cool opportunity here in Oshkosh. Maybe you can kind of give us a little overview of what exactly the police academy is. Uh, the, police, the Citizens Police Academy is uh, a way for... Uh, regular folks like you and me, uh, citizens, to learn a lot about the, the internal workings of how the police department uh, does things, why they do things, and it's no cost, and it's certainly we want people to become uh, ambassadors, but also become more aware of what the police department does, and if somebody says, well, I don't know why the police department does this or that, a lot of those questions are answered. So uh, if you join the academy, it's, it's only for six weeks, one night a week for a couple hours a night, and it's going to start Tuesday, September 20th. Uh, it's in the evening, so if you can, uh, absolutely contact uh, the police department and let them know that uh, 
you're interested in being on the Citizens Academy. Yeah. It's a great opportunity to kind of see the inner workings, like you said, and I guarantee you'll have a newfound appreciation for everything that our police department does behind the scenes, you, too. You absolutely will, and we've had these before, and we stopped doing it because the uh, the interest waned because I think a lot of people had gone through it, but so we're now we're, we're reopening it and hoping mm -hmm. that we get interested citizens that want to partake in it. A new Chief Smith wants to reach out and mm -hmm. uh, get people aware of what and why's and just create good ambassadors for the police department. And I know one of the evenings is devoted to the K-9 units, which alone is a reason enough to do it oh, too, yeah, for me absolutely. at least. <laughs> <laughs> also, while we're talking about the police department, we wanted to mention the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign going on uh, tomorrow through September 5th. And this is just a great time to kind of be aware and make others aware of the importance of driving sober, not driving buzzed, even if you have a couple drinks. Um, so the police department, I believe, is going to have extra officers out kind of cracking down this month um, to just raise that awareness and make people understand how important that is. I know people want to have fun at the end of the summer and, and, and before they, you know, the summer season's over and winter sets in, but yes, be very careful. And there's so many great uh, programs in the community. The Tavern League has programs where they will pick you up at no cost. They recognize the responsibility that they, they have and they're willing to do that as well. And you can get all that information on the police department website, oshkoshpd.com. Mm -hmm. You can get an application for the Citizens Academy, yes. learn more about the Drive Sober uh, effort that we're going to be doing. Uh, but please be responsible when you're out there over the holidays. Yes, and all that information on the police department's website or zeroinwisconsin.com has some awesome information about that too. Another thing we want to talk about, Mark, is dealing with the neighborhoods. It's great to have a, a regular neighborhood update. They've got a groundbreaking coming up over in the Sawyer Creek Neighborhood Association uh, over at Carl Traeger School, their playground. The community in Sawyer Creek decided that the, the project they wanted to have to really provide some unity to their community uh, is uh, the, the playground over and they're calling it the Timberwolves Inclusive Community Playground. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a groundbreaking uh, it's a Tuesday, the 23rd, the same day as a council meeting, <laughs> but uh, it's that's their rallying point in their neighborhood. Uh, the playground hasn't been redone since uh, Traeger School was built there in the 90s, so the school district's putting in some money. I believe the neighborhood's putting in some money from a fundraising effort they've done, and so our Great Neighborhoods program is providing some matching funds to make this not just a, a playground for uh, the kids at Traeger, but also a playground that uh, for the entire community to use. Yes, and uh, Julie Kiefer from the Sawyer Creek Neighborhood Association was in on Oshkosh today, and she was saying it's just been a, a realization that this playground is really their neighborhood park, and so it's not just the school's playground, it's a place that everyone in their neighborhood kind of congregates, and um, I believe you mentioned this, that they're getting a grant from the Community Foundation Great Neighborhoods Program to accomplish that, so it's just a really cool project to see how, uh, how all the neighbors came together and made this happen. And it's not just for that neighborhood, it's, you know, it's designed by the neighborhood for the neighborhood, right. but it's, it's an inclusive playground. So people of all abilities, uh, grandparents who normally can't get to a, a, a playground with sand around it and things like that, you're not going to have those barriers there. It's mm -hmm. going to be barrier free. So absolutely, um, you know, even after it's done, I uh, encourage people to go look at it. Definitely. And if people are interested in joining a neighborhood association or creating a neighborhood association for their neighborhood, uh, they can just call Liz or Alexa over here at the city and the planning department. Their numbers are on the city website. Uh, and it's really not as hard as it seems to start a neighborhood association. So we definitely encourage people to do that. Next thing we want to talk about, Mark, is an open house coming up on some zoning, zoning ordinance updates. Tell us a little bit about uh, what the status of the zone, zoning ordinance is. We've been working on... Uh, updating our zoning code uh, because you know after time it just gets a little tired and mm -hmm. things change over time and standards need to be updated to reflect modern time so on August 31st over at the Senior Center from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, we're gonna have an open house and just get input uh, show you what we've been working on uh, we've had a outside consultant working with us for uh, almost a couple years now this is not just you know, throw it together and, and get it out. This has been a very deliberative process, but we're not, it says we want to hear from you. We really need mm -hmm. to hear from the, the, from the residents because this is going to impact you for a long time. You can change the zoning code technically anytime, but really you get it changed and it kind of stays in place for a while. So if you want to have input into the process, now's the opportunity to do it. 
Um, so we're going to have, I believe it's Van de Waal is the consultant, the representatives from Van de Waal will be there. Our planning staff and zoning staff will be there. Um, it's a great public input session, and you'll learn a lot about how uh, land use issues work by just participating in the process. So if you want to learn more about the process, I'd encourage you to attend. Definitely. And you can find all the information about that workshop or ask questions at our city website at ci.oshkosh.wi.us uh, or give our planning department a call too. So now it's that time of the show where viewers have a chance to ask their city manager anything they want about things that are happening in their city. So let's go ahead and take a look at the question mark segment this week. So Mark, the question this week is why aren't there sidewalks on Oakwood Road between Witzel and 9th, just north of Mercy Hospital? North of Mercy Hospital, uh, I'll give you the real short answer and then we'll get into a little bit of it. The area north of Mercy Hospital is not in the city of Oshkosh. Which so, I didn't know until we were looking up the answer to this question. Well, you know, the borders, and you know, you can kind of see them on the screen here. The, the grayish area is the city of Oshkosh and the, the, the tan area is the town of Algoma. We have a wonderful working relationship with the town of Algoma, mm -hmm. and we've been working at it for a number of years, and we have a border agreement, and there's only so much that uh, can be taken out of the town of Algoma and added to the city of Oshkosh, um, and this area is what's called the protected zone, so it's not gonna change anytime soon. So you can see the tan area north of Mercy Hospital is completely in uh, in, this, in the town of Algoma. There's a little area just north of Witzel where it looks like that blue or uh, grayish area is getting close, but there's one house depth the entire length of Oakwood. So oh, okay. um, and now in some cases the city does have part of the road, but anytime that we have properties that are not in the city, even if we have the road, we generally won't do it there either because when we do sidewalks, we special assess. Mm -hmm. And if they're in the town of Algoma, we couldn't assess to them anyway, which is would be unfair to our residents that we will assess them but not assess other people. But we can't do that. So we pretty much wait until it's all in the city, the right-of-way as well as the adjoining properties, so that they can pay their fair share to those. Mm -hmm. But in this case, there's it's not in the city at all from pretty much from just north of the hospital literally all the way north. Uh, you get into the town of Algoma, north of Witzel, and north of Highway 21, so then you're, out, you're, you're completely out of the city. So it gives you an idea that uh, you know, it's, it's not all the city of Oshkosh, even yeah. though people identify it with Oshkosh. It's interesting. And I, I love the fact that people identify <laughs> with Oshkosh, even if they don't live in the city, but mm -hmm. there's only, we, we can't be putting improvements in where we Right. don't have property and that makes sense it's not just a big square that the city of Oshkosh is like a lot of people like myself think sometimes so <laughs> I found if you go on Google Maps and just look up city of Oshkosh you can see all of the inner you know see, uh, what is it the detail the of, details of the, and, the city boundaries and that comes right from Google Maps so right. it just gives yeah. you a good idea so you can look <laughs> it up and our, our folks are Scott tweaked it a little yes. bit to make it highlight a little better but that's, uh, you can see what's in the city and what's not in the city. Mm -hmm. So awesome question this week. That question came from Twitter. If you have a question for Mark that you'd like to have answered on City Manager's Report, you can email it to us at questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us. Send it to us on Twitter or on our Facebook page and he will answer it on the next episode. We're going to take a quick break here on City Manager's Report and when we come back we will dive into the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, August 23rd. We'll be right back. Oshkosh Media is Government Programming on GovTV Community Programming on Life TV, Community Radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9 WOCT Online at OshkoshMedia.org YouTube and Facebook Geniuses of Oshkosh, who are they? 
From innovative engineers to nationally recognized artists, this unique exhibit introduces these inspirational individuals. Admire the incredible artistry of Helen Farnsworth Mears. Discover a local mechanic who built a submarine and learn about a musician who was drawn to this live wire town. Geniuses of Oshkosh at the Oshkosh Public Museum until October 16th. Discover more at oshkoshmuseum.org. Welcome back to City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us. We are here with City Manager Mark Roloff, and we're about to dive into the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, August 23rd, 2016. So Mark, first items that we want to talk about are some of the presentations that are going to take place at the very beginning of the meeting, and we're going to kind of just go through each one of them. The first one is from the Grand Opera House. Joe Furlow is going to be giving a presentation on the 2016 and 17 season. Tell us a little bit about what we might be able to expect from that. Oh, for the last couple of years, Joe has made a presentation to the council, kind of keeping them up to date on what things are going on. I'm not at liberty to give the, all the details. That's no Joe's. Sneak peeks yet. No, that's <laughs> Joe's job, and I and I think he's already been doing some of it. But mm -hmm. I think he wants to. You know, the the Grand is a city-owned facility. It's managed by the Grand Opera House uh, Foundation, and Joe's the CEO of that. So he's just going to be presenting what's going on for the season. We got some interesting programs going on. I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing some of them, and uh, encourage you to to look in and see what. Uh, Joe and the Oshkosh Opera House Foundation Board have planned for the next season. Yes, it's a great way to keep the council in the loop on what's going on over there, and we look forward to that. Next presentation out of three here is from Jason White over at the Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation, and he's kind of giving a little bit of a semi-ish annual update. He's trying to do them on a, a semi-annual basis just to, uh, number one, not take for granted that uh, the, uh, the support that uh, the city gives to the uh, Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation. Uh, we, we're a good part of it, but we get a lot of support from the private sector, and this is an opportunity to talk about where those investments, both public and private, are, how they're going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason and his staff have been working, meeting up with businesses to, you know, some of the primary things you do is deal with the existing businesses and how can we help them expand, and mm -hmm. that's a, a very important part of economic development. And then whatever we're doing on a cooperative level to encourage people to to uh, come to Oshkosh, we do that as well. Uh, we get a lot of solicitations, uh, primarily from the state, looking for areas, and we respond to those and, and try to treat those clients with the, the greatest uh, respect and discretion, and, and Jason and staff do a great job of that. And So Jason's gonna tease us a little bit with, with some of the things they're up to and uh, how we can help improve economic development. Now that we have our aviation industrial park to market, a, uh, Jason uh, and everybody at uh, Greater Oshkosh Economic Development are, are showing off that park as well as our other uh, areas that can be available for expansion. Yes, it's awesome to see the momentum that they've gained and they're going with it. So it's really cool to see an update and we always look forward to hearing from Jason. After that presentation, Jason will be tag teaming with Eric Fowle from East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission um, and kind of giving us an update on a pretty cool project, the Initiative 41 project. Yeah, actually this is something I've been working on very closely with them. This uh, is the result of some collaboration that stemmed from the Oshkosh Corporation layoffs. That sounds kind of funny, but <laughs> you remember uh, we did get a grant from the Department of, Develop uh, De Department of Defense, excuse me, and it was really to help make our economy more, re more resilient. And one of the things we did through the research is that we really need to recognize how important it is to collaborate as a region because Folks from the outside don't necessarily even see us as, as Oshkosh or the Fox Valley. They say it's, it's, it's Northeast Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And the I-41 corridor really ties us together. That's our transportation hub. So the Initiative 41 is, it's called a new way of thinking. It's just going to be about what we can do to better collaborate. Uh, and uh, I've been uh, part of uh, putting together the uh, video program and presentations. They're making presentations to cities, villages, and towns and county boards up and down the I-41 corridor. It's Oshkosh's turn and Eric and Jason are going to uh, 
explain a little bit, and you'll see me in the video. So uh, uh, <laughs> make they're a cameo. making a cameo appearance. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's a, a very good initiative, and I. Uh, look forward to their presentation. Definitely. Well, it sounds like some really good presentations at the start of the meeting, so we'll definitely want to tune in for that. But later on, there's also some great things you're talking about. A lot of special events on this agenda. A couple that we wanted to just uh, give a little plug to is, first of all, the Jeremy Manette Rack and Glow Fun Run Walk. This is the second annual coming up on October 21st. It is, and uh, they're using it for a lot of uh, social events. Jeremy was very much a part of uh, Christine Ann Center, but it's other uh, initiatives that they're working on for other charities, uh, but it's October 21. Uh, so we're just giving everybody an advance and certainly look up their website and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy, actually, you know, we were just talking about Greater Oshkosh. Uh, he was a, a, one of the founding members of Greater Oshkosh Economic Development. So uh, certainly uh, holds a place in our heart here. So Friday, October 21, a lot of fun. I went to the event last year. It's it was, so cool. It is so cool. I mean, the, the imagination that people put together to get the lights <laughs> going and everything in very many and different ways. And mm -hmm. it's a it's a nice uh, fundraiser and encourage people to uh, check it out and maybe participate. Fun family-friendly event. There you yes. go. Another family-friendly event is the Oshkosh Chamber Holiday Parade. I can't believe we're already talking about this, but it's on the agenda today or next week uh, for November 17th. And that's just an approval of the special event. And and we can mark our calendars for that. We have so many special events on this calendar, but these are two that are just great. Like mm -hmm. you said, fun family events. So uh, I know you don't want to be thinking about this, but <laughs> you know it's just one example of the many special events that we hold in Oshkosh. But these are, you know, this one, it's funny. The Chamber's been doing this for a number of years. This is a great event. The, the, the Monette one is a relatively new one. We've got new and old events going on, and we're very excited to, uh, to do that. We'll be plugging this one uh, Oh, yeah. Again. And I can tell you the theme this year is tying in with some of the downtown town things happening during the holidays so that's a little preview for people but oh, it's so always a fun thing to look forward to so just look forward to all those events definitely moving down into the new ordinances mark uh, 24 and 25 we want to talk about approve request to attach to the city from town of black wolf at 3224 oregon street and then also a request to attach to the city from town of nakaima at 3467 oregon street Tell us a little bit about this. Now, we talked in question mark about the borders and things like that. Is that kind of a similar situation where... It's interesting that we get these coming up all at this, on the mm -hmm. same agenda. But, uh, you know, we have border agreements with uh, the town of Black Wolf and the town of Nakaima as well. And one of the things that's part of that is the circumstances under which we would attach a property or annex them into the city. Uh, there's a subtlety in the terms. But the idea is whenever somebody needs service from the city for example for water or sewer one of the cases here i can't remember which one one the, the well in this property has failed and the other one the septic has failed so if they want to get municipal services they need to attach the city mm -hmm. and that's the process that we follow so we're going to be adding these properties to the city so they can take advantage of uh, city services particularly water and sewer okay pretty straightforward Next item we want to talk about under new resolutions is item number 29, resolution 16-442, approved tax increment district number 30 project plan. This is for the Washington building redevelopment, and this is a really exciting project. So why don't you give us an overview? This is a, a really, really exciting project, and it's interesting because earlier we were talking about the why. Mm -hmm. This is the Washington building is on Washington Avenue, uh, adjacent to William Waters Plaza, which we were just talking about recently. But Beautiful it's, building. it's an old, it's a turn of the century, 19, uh, 19th to 20th century building uh, that they are completely gutting and going to put in uh, luxury apartments there. Mm -hmm. I believe the number is probably about 30. I, I don't know the mm -hmm. exact number, but it's immediately across from the public library. And the, the, the critical mass that's developing in that area with the Y doing their expansion and the River East Neighborhood Association saying, we want to have our neighborhood be exciting and interesting. And uh, the renovations that they want to do and propose at the uh, William Waters mm -hmm. Plaza, which is adjacent to the Washington Building and across from the library, that was what we we had the uh, award at the um, yes at the National Night Out. So this gives you an overview of what it looks like. But um, the Washington Building itself, the idea is to uh, assist them in creating luxury apartments. And one of the things that we found out by working with them is it's it's a very expensive project to renovate this to current standards. Uh, they could build these apartments for a much cheaper cost somewhere else in the city, meaning outside. But rather than do that, they're willing to invest inside the city, but it actually turns a negative return on them without two things. One is historic tax credits, 
which are offered by the state, and the other one is TIF. What this does is this gives them that, that boost that's needed to get them into the black. It's not a lot into the black. It's very little into the black. They could still go a lot of other places and, and get a much better return, but the investment that they're putting into the city is going to have a cumulative effect for everybody, and that's what we're really hoping for to achieve with, with a project like this. So it's really making sense um, and making it kind of worth their their time and their money to invest in this place in the city. It's that downtown revitalization, the, the, the city that we're talking about. And I think that, you know, in the long term, <laughs> what they're hoping is that they can, this will be a stimulus for other investments that they may do that maybe they can make money on down the road. Th th they're not going to make a great deal of money uh, on this. Uh, but they got to do something. They're, they're not in the business to lose money. So we have to work with them on that. So what's after this part on, uh, you know, the, the approval of the TID district? What happens next? The next step in the process is there's a joint review board that consists of members of all the taxing entities that are foregoing this increased value. They'll still collect what they're currently collecting today, but the increment goes to the district to help pay for the improvements that are going in there. So representatives from the city, the county, uh, the Voc Tech District, Fox Valley Technical College, and Oshkosh Area School District uh, will vote on this as a joint review board. Then after that, we'll have the development agreement that will spell out exactly what incentives we will or will not be giving. Uh, there's also a very creative uh, proposal here to uh, uh, sell them some land and in, chain, in turn, uh, as compensation for the land, they will uh, put money towards the renovation of the parking lot immediately behind there. So mm -hmm. they'll have a garage on part of the property that they're buying from us, and then they'll improve uh, the remainder of the parking lot. So that'll be a very creative way to improve the property, uh, and that'll all get brought to council uh, in the next month or so after the, the TIF gets approved. So we'll be hearing about it as they make future steps yeah, and things going on. Very exciting. Well, it's great to hear about that project and a lot of great things happening downtown here in Oshkosh, which we're happy about. Uh, one thing that we wanted to mention is a budget workshop coming up on August 30th at 5 p.m. Any specific things that we're going to be looking forward to in this workshop? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the real theme of this is to take a look back at 2015 to see where we're set up going into the 2016 year mm -hmm. and then uh, looking ahead to 2017. Our, auditor, our auditors will be there to give a review of what 2015 entails and kind of, you know, warn us about things that are on the horizon that we have to be careful about. And then some projections that our finance staff and our finance director, Trina Larson, put together, and they will put that out there. Uh, and that'll set us up for budget uh, submittals by departments as we move forward. Definitely. And last item we want to mention here, Mark, is feedback on workshop regarding the diversity coordinator study. Any new feedback on this or are you kind of just giving an update? You may recall that we had the workshop back in July and uh, normally the council asked me to come back uh, till after they've molded over for a month or so. What do you want to do now that we have the workshop? We don't take action at workshops, mm -hmm. so the council will be providing some direction on where they think they want this to go. So it's given them time to consider it and now they will... Uh, will give me direction on where we go from here. So stay tuned for more on that, I guess we can yeah, say. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a good discussion on mm -hmm. Tuesday. Definitely. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today on City Manager's Report. It's great to get a preview of the uh, council meeting before we watch it on Tuesday. It's always so. a pleasure. <laughs> Again, the City Council meeting is this Tuesday, August 23rd at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on GovTV and on our website, oshkoshmedia.org, or you can listen to it on 101.9 Oshkosh FM, which is also online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Make sure to like our new page face on Facebook. It's called Oshkosh Media. Or follow us on Twitter for all of your community and government programming and updates. Or, of course, you can check out our YouTube channel for government meeting replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, you can email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us. Send it to us on Twitter or Facebook, and he will answer it on the next episode of CMR. As always, thanks so much for joining us on City Manager's Report, and we will see you next time.